Right, as cyclists, we always get told lighter is better. You want to be as lean as possible. What's per kilo? All of that stuff. If you're super light, it's really good. I thought, actually, I don't think that's true. I think there is an ideal weight for a cyclist. And, okay, they're very lean, but there is an ideal weight. So I'm just going to go through some of the cyclists and you'll see a trend. I'm going to go for my first... I've got two outliers to this and then everyone else is pretty similar. So I've got Mark Cavendish, who's obviously a sprinter. He is 70 kilos, 1 meter 75. So a little bit shorter than my ideal, which you'll get on to see, and probably a similar weight, maybe a little bit heavier. But this is a sprinter. So you can see, anyway, 70 kilos, more or less, 175, 180. We then go to my next outlier, which is Nino Schurter. A little bit smaller, 173, but then 68 kilos because he is a mountain biker. But again, you can see roughly in the guidelines, but these are the two outliers. But I'm then going to go, you probably see these people at the top, and I'll show you why, well not why, but all these people have very similar characteristics. First, Wat Van Aert, 70 kilos, 1 meter 87. Garen Thomas, 1 meter 83, 71 kilos. Nibali, 1 meter 81, 65 kilos. Valverde, 1 meter 78, 61 kilos. Chris Froome, 1 meter 86, 69 kilos. Uh, Matthew Vanderpoel, um, he's down here somewhere, but we'll get onto him in a bit. Tom Dumoulin, 69 kilos, 1 meter 85. Uh, here we go. Apparently, there's some power. Matthew Vanderpoel, 1 meter 84, 75 kilos. Uh, and then we also have, well, here's Michael Rasmussen. So, anyway, what I'm trying to say is that for me, there's like an ideal height, especially for like endurance races, long stage races. There is this seems to be this ideal sort of characteristic which a lot of the GC characters do. Obviously not all of them. Sami Yates is a very small man. Quintana is a very small man. But the people who've won most of the tours in the last couple of years, Garrett Thomas, who won the last year's Tour de France, and Nibli has won all of them. All of the uh, Grand Tours, you can see here, twice Giro d'Italia, 2016, 2013, 2014, Lombardia, done it. Um, I could have included Timo Pino, he's pretty similar as well, 62 kilos, um, and probably about 1 meter 80 as well. Um, Valverde, I mean, you don't even, I mean, he's just ridiculous. And again, he is that height. He's not a super, super skinny climber, right? He is obviously very skinny, but he's 1 meter 78. He's actually quite tall for a, a lightweight climber. He's still 61 kilos and has an outrageous sprint. Uh, Alaphilippe I could have included as well. Chris Froome needs no introduction. Four Tour de France's, Giro d'Italia. Vuelta Espana, again, 69 kilos, 1 meter 86. There's that thing where it's like you can be good on the time trial and good on the climbs. You're not going to be necessarily as punchy at this weight, but that's what you are. Matteo Vanderpoel. Um, Tom de Moulin, 69 kilos, 1 minute 85, won everything ever. Incredible time trialers, but at that weight. And that is the weight, I think, for me, the way you can now compete with the small climbs, especially at the Tour de France where the climbs are pretty flat um, and time trial well. Uh, you, for like Simon Yates, obviously he's a lot smaller and he can win races. And then again, Matthew Vanderpoel, 1 minute 84. It's interesting, you've got his threshold here, it's about 5.3 watts per kilo, which isn't great, to be honest, um, for a world tour rider. Um, but I think it's probably a lot less now. It's probably more like 70 kilos. But anyway, you can see 1 meter 84 again. So it doesn't really matter more discipline, sprinter or mountain biker or cyclocross rider, punchy rider, stage racer. The only set, I guess, is a pure climb, not necessarily. But you can see what I mean. There is this formula of like being about 1 meter 80, more or less. Okay, some of them are smaller, like Nino Scherz, quite a lot smaller. Um, and then about 60, 65 to 70 kilos, more or less. That is, seems to be the, roughly what's best. Um, and it's just pretty interesting looking at them all because, like, you think you think that people always say you can be lots of different body shapes and succeed in cycling, and that's true to an extent. But if you're 40, 50 kilos as a guy, you're not going to win many races. Some of them, you know, might. And if you're, like, 85 kilos, 90 kilos, you've got spring classics, and maybe if you're a sprinter, you might be able to get along, but not really. You'll find that most of the pro cyclists who are very successful are in this, this range. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about domestic racing talking about world tour racing there always seems to be this sort of like peak range where i guess you can be lean you can have very like long legs with good leverage things like that um but yeah it's what it seems to be like what are your thoughts oh you think do you think this is actually true or is just i'm finding data to fit my predictions so i'm thinking this is what it is um or i'm just thinking about the tour de france because obviously a lot of these riders have won the tour de france which does not have as many steep climbs so it does suit a more time trial as heavier rider maybe if they did different races but having said that Chris Room won the Giro Dumoulin won the Giro Garrett Thomas has done well in the Giro before he crashed out so I mean it's like for me I think there is definitely this thing where if you're going to be a GC rider you'd obviously you just want to be slightly heavier but even if you're just a punchy rider in general like Wout Van Aert you are going to be slightly heavier so you have that good sprint good time trialist um, and everything else so I think for me there's definitely a correlation 
um, between being a world-class cyclist and this weight. And it's not to say you can't be a world-class cyclist if you're not that weight and height. And it's not to say that if you are that height and weight, you're going to be a world-class cyclist. But it definitely helps a lot. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. I hope hope you did enjoy this video. If you have any more thoughts about like weight, height, sort of what proportions make the best cyclists, leave them in the comments below. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.